Hey YouTube, it's Zero Fossil Fuel. Um, Want to let you know what's going on with the update on the cell. A um, couple of people have made some suggestions. They said that uh, the gas outlet was too large and they thought that it would remain flooded and create leakage between the cells, between the cell cavities. And I, I kind of agreed with that. So here's what I've done to address that issue. Here is my opening for the gas outlet. In the, in the side of the shim, all right? So we'll start, we'll start with that. This is my gas opening. And there was a channel running across the top of the tube that, inter that joined all of these outlets together. And the way I had ground the channel at the top of the cell, it actually exited all the way at the back and allowed gas to escape right away, keeping the entire section of that opening flooded if the gas volume was not great enough. So what I've done to address that problem, I slept on it last night and I woke, and I awoke with the answer and, and wrote it down, um, is I've created a little baffle piece right here. And the purpose of this baffle piece is to, is to create a channel whereby the gas has to exit the bottom. All right. So this baffle represents the innermost ring inside the chamber. Gas coming up and out over the top of this gas outlet on the shim that separates the plates has to pass over the top. And instead of passing, going right past the top of this shim like the channel is, is ground, ground out now, what, what I've done inside the cell is I've actually taken that channel and blocked it off at the end so that the gas has to come and pass up through the shim channel and then down through the baffle before it can come out underneath the baffle and exit up through the center of the bubbler. What that will do is even with low gas volume production it will keep the level of the electrolyte just below the top edge of the inside diameter of the spacer shim and it will keep the opening of the gas outlet completely clear of fluid at all times regardless of the gas flow coming out of each side of the of the inverted T cell all right that's modification number 1 modification number 2 Previously, I had only two electrolyte return channels because what I, what I had wanted to do was force the current to go zigzag between plates. So if one plate received its electrolyte from this channel, the second plate would receive its electrolyte from this channel, and then the third plate would receive its electrolyte from here, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Theoretically, what I wanted it to do was zigzag all the way across, but in reality, every other plate is open, is open to each other. Now, even though the distance is twice as great, so is the voltage. And with the voltage being twice as great, there's still going to be a considerable amount of current leakage through the electrolyte return channel at the bottom of the cell. How do you fix that? Simple. You give each cell chamber its own electrolyte return channel. So you can see I have ground six return channels and the way it's going to work is the two plate cavities closest to the center will receive their electrolyte from the two channels that are furthest apart. And as we move further, further away from the center, the next two will receive their electrolyte from these two channels and the last two will receive their electrolyte from the two center channels. That will create, in all cases, the longest possible return path for electrical current. And the, obviously, we know that the path, the current will take the path of least resistance, which is the shortest distance between plates. So there will always be at least two inches that the current has to travel in order to jump past the plate, which is only spaced 5 16ths of an inch from the next adjacent plate. 
This should virtually eliminate all leakage currents inside this cell. That combined with the modification of the baffle inside, inside the tube, and you can see how that baffle has been assembled inside the tube there, all right? And at the back, you can see how I've sealed the, the channel. If you look towards the back there on the opposite side of the, uh, of the two-inch opening, you can see I've taken some marine adhesive and I've sealed that off so that the gas has to pass downward through that groove that's been cut in the baffle in order to reach the center of the tube bubbler and, get, and go up and out through the center. And I forgot to turn on the wireless mic, so I'll narrate this separately. You can see I've uh, assembled the rings to check for alignment, and across the top you see the, the outlets that have been drilled in the spacer rings, how they align with the gas outlet channel at the top of the cell. Across the bottom, you can see plainly the gap that's created uh, for each electrolyte return channel that runs all the way back to the center of the cell, and angling the the pipe up a little bit you can see how each of the electrolyte return holes have been drilled in the bottom of each ring to line up with its respective uh, electrolyte return channel going all the way again to the center of the cell now since the two inner cells are utilizing the two outermost channels the uh, distance that electrolyte or current must travel to bypass the next adjacent plate is two and a half inches and in the center the uh, distance from the edge of the cell to the center is three inches so the total distance would be six inches so worst case scenario we have a t about a two and a half inch uh, travel path for c current leakage which we know is not going to happen because of course current will take the path of least resistance All that remains now is to cut three more spacer rings to complete the right side of the cell, two more neutral plates to give me the plate count that I need on each side of the cell, and uh, start assembling the plates and gluing the spacer rings into place.